Hello and welcome back to the channel. On this episode we have the GY561 power stroke frequency meter. This meter was lent to me by Mick G0 LDB for the review. Upon inspection the meter seems I have to say fairly cheap and a little plasticky. It comes equipped with a single SMA connector on the top so no through meter usage with this one. Uh, this is what you get in the box, you get a little BNC adapter there and a little stubby antenna. The unit takes three AAA batteries which slot uh, nicely into the back and unlike some of the other reviews there didn't seem to be an issue with the battery compartment on this one. It seemed to, to stay shut and not rattle around too much. Um, pushing and holding the power button on the top of the meter there brings the meter into life. You'll notice straight away there's no backlit display on this unit. Um, like I say, plugging in the, uh, the internal antenna and a quick test on VHF seem to produce fairly accurate frequency results, so that's not too bad and it's what you'd expect. The unit does come supplied with this pigtail lead, although I substituted that for an end connector. Now, I plugged it into the ICOM first because this is um, a very accurate radio in terms of power output, so it's a good one to use as a reference. And we can see straight away the 5 watt output there was showing much higher on the unit on VHF. And this was a good 10 watts down on UHF on, on high power. The meter seemed to get a little bit overloaded there. And then on VHF it was a little bit low, but still within the meter's 10% accuracy that it claims to have. Power testing was done using the following radios as in the previous video and a chart was compiled with the data on, a link to which you will find in the description below. Well, what to say about this pocket meter? If you look at the chart closely, you will see how it performs next to the Shorecom and the Avair meter. On UHF, the meter consistently read, on average, 2 watts higher than those meters, in some cases going past the manufacturer's ratings for this radio. I had seen this rather over generous reading on other videos. This is why I was keen to get this meter in for a test. Looking at the VHF mid and high power charts you can see a similar effect apart from the 50 watt high power reading where the meter seemed to read lower, almost as if it couldn't handle the higher power. The difference was greater at about an average of 3 watts between the other meters. The minimum power the meter is capable of resolving is 100 milliwatts. It did detect the ICOM ICE super low power level of 100 milliwatts quite accurately to be fair. At UHF low to mid power, the accuracy seemed to improve a little bit, with results that more closely matched the other meters, getting to within about a watt of each other here. On UHF mid power the meter seemed to read a little high to me compared to the other meters, however it was UHF high power where the meter really couldn't cope. It seemed to be totally oversaturated, reading 10 watts lower than it should do on the 35 watt Yesu test. And remember, no PL259 adapters were used on this test. The meter was connected through the either SMA or N-type connectors at all times. The meter claims to be plus or minus 10% accurate. I found it to be much higher on average, about 30% accurate to the established benchmarks, manufacturer's specs and my own recorded data. As far as power accuracy, I would have to say the meter is overly generous or inaccurate if you like on lower to mid power settings and gets overloaded on high power settings where it reads under by quite a considerable margin. The meter claims to be able to measure power levels of up to 50 watts, however in reality it just doesn't do it at all accurately. There isn't much I like about this meter if I'm being honest. First is the price. At £30 here in the UK I think this isn't very good value at all when you consider for between £10 to £15 more you can pick up the Shorecom, which if you haven't seen my last video is a very good power meter. It's much more accurate, it has a rechargeable battery, a backlit screen and also does SWR and it can also be connected in line with your existing equipment. For me the retail on a meter of this quality should be around the £10 or $10 mark. It is possible to calibrate the meter by opening the cover and adjusting the trim pots on the board but the end user shouldn't be expected to do, to do this or would have the equipment to calibrate it and I am not going to attempt to do it because it's not my meter and doing so would technically also invalidate your warranty. So in summary I can't really recommend the GY561 especially when there are other options for not much more money that are so much better and much more accurate. 
Its over generous reading and total lack of any accuracy really leaves it as a very rough pocket meter you might want to use when out and about to check approximate readings. There is a term many hams use when relating to the affordable Chinese radios and that is, is that real watts or Chinese watts? We all know that many of the radios are marketed with much higher power rating capabilities than the radios actually have in reality in order to gather more sales. I would have to say that the GY561 truly does work on Chinese watts in this regard. Right, if you've enjoyed today's video please uh, leave a like and if you haven't please leave a dislike and tell me why. And um, all I've got to say now is we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.